And uh, I would like to request uh, Mark Kim to continue the tempo and momentum with which you guys are burning midnight oil, working on the weekends, uh, reaching out to constituents late night, any which, which time it takes. Yes. Okay, uh, on being in Richmond. So thank you, Mark, for joining us. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rajesh. It's uh, good to see you. Thank you so much for inviting me. And it's good to see so many friends on this uh, virtual call. Like everybody else, I, I regret that we're not in person to be able to enjoy uh, company of each other as well as the celebration and the food. But I'm glad that we're able to still celebrate this today. I know uh, Diwali was, uh, many of us uh, celebrated last week as well. So it's been an ongoing celebration. It looks like a lot of folks that spoke ahead of me were from Loudoun County. Yes. I don't represent any parts of Loudoun County because I'm in but I do represent a very special gentleman, uh, Dr. Sigil Jane, among others. And so I'm glad to be able to have a connection with you. And uh, I've had a chance to meet with a lot of our the American Foundation members in the past. And I, look, I thank you for what you do every single day. As you've heard many times, and for those of you who are practicing this uh, faith, you know that Diwali is a very special time. It's Festival of Light. It's also a time that we uh, commemorate and recognize that good does always triumph evil, even if it takes a long time, that light does overcome darkness and that uh, knowledge is the best antidote to uh, ignorance. And it's clear, especially nowadays, looking at the current news that those issues and those values are more dear today than ever before. But if you think back, our, our country and our uh, people, uh, especially uh, immigrants like you and I, we've gone through a lot in this country. And even before the last four years, we've had a lot of darkness and we've had a lot of evil uh, situation. One comes to mind is about 20 years ago, uh, right after the last uh, very contested presidential election, I lost my job because I was in the Clinton administration. And so many of us then looked for other opportunities. I was lucky enough to go from there to Congress and I was on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. on 9-11. And so the day that uh, the worst terrorism attack happened on our soil, I was uh, in the building. And so we evacuated. The next day when we came back to try to you know, pick up the pieces and start working on how do we uh, fight terrorism and such, we uh, were met by a couple of young men who walked in the hallways and asked us, uh, this is a few days after this, asked me and other staff to do something for them. And we said, yeah, what's going on? Obviously, everybody's going through stuff right now. Everybody's having a difficult time. What can we do for you? And he says, well, as you can see, we're wearing turbans. And we have a certain faith that requires us to work, dress a certain way. We can't cut our uh, facial hair. And so a lot of Americans are looking at us, and they assume that we must be the bad guys. Because unfortunately, the picture of Osama bin Laden and some of the uh, folks that were involved in that terrorist attack looked like them in terms of the headgear and, and the facial uh, hair and said, they said, but we're not Muslims, we're Sikhs. And yet most Americans have no idea who we are, what we believe in. And so just the fact that we look different than other religious faiths, people are targeting us. In fact, the first murder of an American, fellow American after 9-11 happened in Arizona when a Sikh American a gentleman was murdered because he, of the way he dressed. And so my boss at the time, Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, uh, we talked to him and said, hey, we got the situation. Uh, in addition to all the anti-Arab, anti-Muslim uh, sentiment that's going on, there's also a, an unintended consequence where we have people of the Sikh faith in particular, but Hindus and, and other, others that are in the non-traditional religions in America, they're being targeted for what they believe in. And that's just wrong. That's not the way our country ought to be. So we drafted the resolution that uh, condemns any kind of anti-sentiment uh, of discrimination or racial tensions or even physical violence against those of Sikh Americans. It was the first time in American history that the word Sikh and Sikhism appears in the US code in any way. And the Congress actually debated that issue. So I had a hand in drafting that and working with uh, our senators and our Congress to pass it. It eventually passed as a separate standalone resolution, but also as part of the dreaded USA Patriot Act. As much as I hate 99% of the USA Patriot Act, one of the good things that survived was the resolution condemning uh, hatred and bigotry and violence against Sikh Americans. And so that was something that we had 20 years ago. We've had dark days since then as well, but probably not as dark as that particular moment. So when we celebrate Diwali as a festival of light and the overcoming of uh, light over darkness, good over evil, I'm reminded that one of the origins of Diwali as a festival and, and a, a the tradition, uh, religious faith, 
is the fact that uh, the Battle of uh, Ramayana, where uh, the king, uh, the Lord defeated uh, King Ravana, and on the way back, you had 14 days of lights uh, bringing them back home. And so that's one of the reasons why the Festival of Light is so significant. But depending on which part of the uh, Hindu religion and even the Buddhists, they have different versions of why they celebrate Diwali. And um, I don't know about your faith, but uh, for some folks, they look at Diwali being significant because it's also the day when Goddess Lakshmi uh, married uh, uh, God Hing, uh, uh, Vishnu. And so that was one of the moments that brought goodness together. And as that beautiful song by the young lady just now singing uh, to the Goddess Lakshmi, reminds me that Goddess Lakshmi in mo all of the paintings and the pictures, she's depicted sitting on a lotus leaf on the pedestal with lotus in her hands because lotus is such a a beautiful symbol of uh, prosperity and wealth and peace and, and tranquility. And at this particular moment, as we're about to transition into another presidential election and hopefully a new day in America, I'm reminded that Lotus in, in Sangri, Sanskrit means Kamala. And the word Kamala is very much related to Goddess Lashmi as well. And so how symbolic and how fitting is it as we turn this dark period in American history of the last four years, we turn to a person who was born into the Hindu faith, even though she doesn't practice it today. She is very familiar with the Hindu faith because of her mother. Somebody who looks like us, somebody who has a life history and personal background that identifies the American story of the 21st century, which is a, one of diversity, and who literally brings goodness back into this country, overcoming evil and bringing light after very uh, dark years of darkness. And that she and her uh, running mate, President-elect Biden, will finally bring some knowledge and intelligence over ignorance, something that we've been lacking for so long in America. So I am looking forward to the festival of Diwali now, but more importantly, I'm looking forward to the future Diwali festival and so many other days, because our best days as Americans are still yet to come. And so I wish all of you a happy Diwali Festival of Light and lots of prosperity, wealth, and health. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Mark. You have summarized the Diwali, Diwali Festival better. Um, epitome of uh, knowledge yourself and also commitment and being an immigrant and having so many diverse constituents like um, my friend, philosopher, and guide, Dr. Jain, uh, who's a stellar um, community leader, uh, also served in the US Navy and several other community leaders. We're gonna talk about them, but thank you for summarizing the sentiment of Deepavali and joining us. We'll continue to work with you and we'll be back sometime later, uh, talk about more issues and such.